Hello chess lovers, I have another spectacular game for you played by Mikhail Tal. His opponent is a Georgian chess player Buhuti Gurgenidze and the game was played at 1957 USSR Championship. Gurgenidze had white pieces and he started with d4, knight f6 by Tal, c4, c5, d5, e6, Tal goes for Benoni defense, knight c3, e takes d5, c takes d5, d6, knight f3, g6, e4, bishop g7, bishop e2, we see chaos link by both sides, rook e8, knight d2, both players are choosing the main moves knight a6 and rook e1. Of course, instead of playing rook e1, f3 is more popular, which gives more solidity to white center. But instead, after knight a6, we see rook e1, knight c7, a4, preventing any possible advancement on the queen side, b6, queen c2, and knight g4. A very ambitious move by Mikhail Tal, which actually allows white to gain a slight advantage. Gurgenitsa played h3, after which white is actually facing serious problems. It was better to get rid of this sneaky knight and then play knight c4 and then bishop f4, starting to put pressure on this d6 square. But instead, after knight g4, we see h3. And now you can pause the video and try to find Tal's next move. Ready? As you can see, the knight on g4 square is under attack, but instead of moving back the knight, Tal played knight takes f2. Look at this. He's just using the fact that the dark squares are weakened and white pieces are concentrated on the queen side. King takes f2. Well, knight f3 could have been better, though after bishop takes c3, b takes c3, black is also capturing on e4, and though now black is left without this powerful fianchettoed bishop on g7, actually black has two extra pawns. But instead, after knight takes f2, we see king takes f2. Here comes the queen, queen h4 check, king f1. Of course, white can't place the king on g1 square because the rook will be no longer protected. Here comes the dark square bishop, bishop d4 with a direct mating threat. Knight d1 covering the f2 square. Of course, you won't play knight f3 because like in a scholar's mate, you will get checkmated. That's why after bishop d4, we see knight d1. But in this position, Mikhail Tal came up with another brutal move. Can you find his next move? Ready? He simply captured the pawn on h3 as well. Look at this insane queen sacrifice. Of course, that queen sacrifice can't be accepted because after bishop takes h3, we will see a Boden mate on the board. A fantastic checkmate. Actually, after queen takes h3, white's game is shattered, and though white still has a nominal material advantage, but as you can see, white king is in danger and white pieces are unable to cooperate properly. After queen takes h3, white played bishop f3, queen h2, knight e3, f5, trying to open up the e-file, knight c4, f takes e4, bishop takes e4, and now comes the bishop, bishop a6, pinning the knight on c4 square as well, bishop f3, rook e5. Tal is going to double up his rooks on e5, but actually instead of playing rook e5, rook f8 is stronger. And then bringing the second rook as well, and both rooks will simply dominate the position. But after bishop f3, we see rook e5, rook a3, the rook is coming to support his pieces from the third rank, here comes black rook, rook e8, bishop d2, and Tal is gradually starting to grab free pawns. Knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, check rook takes d5, king e2. Of course, the rook can't be touched because of this queen g1 checkmate. That's why we see king e2, now comes bishop takes e3, rook takes e3, and here comes bishop takes c4 and Gurgenidze resigned. Mikhail Tal is simply removing the defender. If queen takes c4, then queen takes g2 check, followed by queen takes d2 checkmate. 
Another brilliant game where Mikhail Tal demonstrated his sharp tactical skills. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this brutal game. Good luck.